Witness me, Smegma Crazies, and welcome back to Mad Max. Today we're going to take out this final top dog camp in the area, mostly because I think if I was going to keep recording any of the camps, it would be the top dog camps. They have the most personality, really. But um, we're also finally going to meet Gut Cash and make the jack, and maybe then Chum will shut up about it. I did get a lot of good feedback from uh, from the uh, question I asked last time, which, you know, I have to say thank you to everybody who dropped in and chimed in, and I really appreciate it, because um, it, it was kind of getting to the point where I was kind of dreading trying to commentate these, just because I don't have so, that much to say. say. <laughs> where are we headed? So, did mark the battle swords. Where can we find sulfur? Oh, uh, the yelly smelly! Yeah, I was definitely... I said something earlier about the Yelly Smelly being Saltpeter. I was wrong. Saltpeter's on two different locations, and then the uh, the Yelly Smelly is Sulfur. And Sulfur is a lot more apparent than where it is. But yeah, from these... This video is going to be the last in this in this format. Uh, future videos are going to have a lot more downtime cut out of them. Uh, Hopefully they'll be more entertaining for that. And this is just showing why we really need to upgrade our magnum opus, because this car can just outspeed us, and that's unacceptable. We're the fastest thing on four wheels. Well, we should be. The uh, thing I did with the harpoon here, the uh, hooked onto his back bumper, as you start upgrading the harpoon, this is one of the things you start being able to do. Uh, you can boost into their, excuse me, boost into their back for a, a large damage boost. Sometimes it even works. And then sometimes, like this guy, they're just too fast, honestly, and you can't really keep up with them. But yeah, I'll still be keeping in uh, the entirety of the meat for things like story missions. And, uh, yeah, story missions and side missions, I still plan to show those off in full. But stuff like camps, I'll probably show dismantling them. Anything oh, no, entertaining yeah. that happens, but aside from that... Eh. The explosion. I was too close. Hurt. Badly. Stink. Gum in his sick pups. Uh. I'm crisped up, and it, please, just end me. Sometimes you encounter wastelanders who just really don't want to continue living, which, you know, wish granted. It's, it's a thing. But yeah, a lot of those little wasteland encounters, I'll probably include a good few of those, especially if they're entertaining. Um, I did see one idea for the uh, for something to do with camps, is just make like a uh, smash cut of every killing blow. And I like that idea, and there's a chance I'll do something about that. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, hopefully, hopefully my video editing skills aren't too garbage. It's a little bit more editing work on my part, but it's also... It's also a lot easier to commentate because I've actually got something interesting going on for 20 minutes to half an hour rather than, well, we sure have driven through this area. Cool. Especially when I can compress down a two hour or an hour and a half video into maybe 30 to 40 minutes, I won't complain. So this area was kind of dangerous because to get here I had to drive through a minefield and there's a few areas like that. A lot of times the minefields are off the beaten path, but then sometimes they're not. And you just kind of have to hope that you don't that run into them. Is similar. Yes, yes, uh, very much so to many of the wonders one can spy in gas town. You hear about that big boy Gasper Grope? He done like explosions none. So one who want to get at him better deal with his boys and dish out some of that boom boom.
So, this is why I say I think the top dog camps are the most interesting ones. They've they've usually got some really unique, um, what you call it, um, unique geography like this. Like the top dogs are the, I guess, just slightly lower than stank gum, but that gives them a lot of clout or. Uh, it gives them a lot of preference in where exactly they want to place their stuff. And you can see here, you know, sometimes placing your uh, your camp on top of something interesting is really the best kind of advertising you can get. Look how cool I am. I put my stuff here. It can be a little tricky to take out these perimeter defenses because of the uh, crude slowing everything down. But, you know, it's not too bad. You can manage. Especially if rather than uh, quick firing the harpoon, you just aim directly for the uh, aim directly for the sniper rather than hitting his tower. It makes things a lot easier. I have no idea where that guy came from. It looks like he just kind of jumped out of the wheel well of the scrapulence there, which is... Cool? I mean, it might fit in with uh, Immortan Joe's idea that everybody, you know, comes from, uh... Comes from the holy vehicle? I don't know. It was... <laughs> it was kind of weird. But yeah, that scrapulence there will serve as a, uh... A nice little uh, takeaway gift once we've taken over this camp. So, you'll see me drive away with that too. There's nothing stopping you from uh, claiming the same vehicle multiple times in your stronghold. It doesn't really do anything for you. I mean, you don't get any extra scrap unless it's a scrapulence, but you can do it if you wanna.
sometimes when you see these little flame tanks, you'll actually have a chance to shoot them rather than having to turn them off. In this case, you can see the uh, scrap metal uh, chained up around it. That actually acts as armor, so we actually had to go to that one to turn it off to make progress. Which, fair. So that fight got a little bit buggy, and you know what? That's okay. So our top dog for this camp, uh, Gasp Grope, Gasp a Grope, yeah, he's a he's a bit different from uh, Stump Grinder. He doesn't have any of the weird psychosexual stuff going on. Gasp a Grope just enjoys two things: uh, hurting things and enjoying things. So you know, he, it kind of works out in his favor that he gets to do both these things right here. Boys, ready for glory and blood. Yeah, so he's got our black on black color scheme, which is gonna look nice and fancy, especially once we make a new interceptor, which will definitely happen. Killed. Like a beast, you must suffer. Your blood must water the earth and your body grab into dust. You may remember the last top dog fight. Top dog fight. I actually had some trouble. You know, because taking advantage of uh, Stump Grinder's uh, weakness to fire was kind of difficult. Um, as it turns out, taking advantage of a weakness to explosions is a lot easier. Yeah, like, I almost feel like I was cheating, because that was... <laughs> that was kind of easy. So yeah, some of, the top, some of the top dogs are much harder than the others, especially if you can't really take good advantage of their weaknesses. Uh, that's a Wastelander informant at least told us, hey, you know, this guy's weak to explosions. 
and you know, unfortunately for Gaspar Grope, he made a habit out of keeping explosive barrels around. Which, you know, probably not good for your health. I did a uh, quick circuit of this uh, little top area here, but didn't really find anything of interest. It seems like that might be a place where they'd put scrap or something, but nope, it's just nice vistas at least. This might fool them. So yeah, this is a long drive nobody really wants to see. Still, gotta drive ever so carefully. Don't want that scrap to fly apart. Not that I definitely don't have that happening on camera, no siree. Definitely never happens to me. But yeah, while we're here on this camp, we can uh, we can build up one of the last uh, projects we have, the last important ones, uh, the oil well. Anytime we come back to this camp, we'll fill up our car's gas tank for us, which is useful. Gas cans do serve more than one purpose in the wasteland. And as a neat touch, uh, I want to say that's everything for this area done. Um, all the important upgrades. Um, some of the ones to show off the maximum leveled, uh, waste of uh, the maximum leveled camp. Hmm. Not, not, not too worried about. Let's go ahead and put on our new, uh, black tar look. Looking fancy fly. Why not try a new car body while we're at it, too? So a lot of our next upgrades we're going to be getting do come from Gut Gash's territory, which... Hey, how convenient. Let's head over that way. Still, so, there are a few things to do on the way there. Um, there is that first saltpeter source, which uh, comes from old battlefields or corpses, or as Jeet, uh, Jeet so eloquently puts it, grows on corpses and piss. Which, you know, you might find both at a battlefield. That's true. But once we get this first uh, upgrade from Gut Gash, I'm going to feel more comfortable taking on... Uh, convoys and things like that, and that'll be what I do for part of the next video, because, you know, convoys suck. I hate seeing them driving around, I hate having to go out of my way to avoid them. You know what? I'm tired of their crap. There is a death run here. I've recently, uh, soured on death runs because death runs are bad. They're not bad, it's just, especially coming from, uh, I'd mentioned that I'd played a lot of uh, Fist of North Star Lost Paradise lately. The driving and the combat is different in that game, and it has kind of ruined how I play this game. So it's going to take me a while to get good again. You know, assuming I was good to start with. Oh, ain't that just a beautiful sight? These guys are like the Dukes of Hazard. one of them sliding across the hood. Only, you know, not quite so graceful. Photo mode is fun. 
Well, like, I, haven't even, I haven't even messed around with the filters or anything, but yeah, photo mode's pretty neat. Something else that I appreciate about, about Gutgash's territory is this isn't filtered or anything. Like, this is just this blinding light. You can really start to see on Gutgash's territory, like, the ocean floor. Look! That smoke! A lot of these rock formations are... They start, they start to look kind of alien. Like, if, you ever, if you've ever seen, like, undersea shots, some of the stuff you find down there looks pretty... looks pretty weird. But you can start to see that here, and I, I really appreciate that. Keep an eye on the car. Certainly, yes. You know I would never leave her side. This wasn't a battle. This was a slaughter. These roadkill are cut to pieces. Of course. I need to find the other one. Looting the dead. Always an important part of Mad Max. It's not like they can use it anymore. There's also close by here, you'll notice this little uh this little buzzard icon. This is one of those um one of those side missions we got a little bit ago. Was to find the find these underground buzzard camps and uh, demolish them. These these aren't anything like demolishing the camps of uh, the top dogs or anything. These are just little side things. They're they're very short, but still they're useful to do because as it turns out buzzards are kind of violent and when it's nighttime and you're driving around, they'll poop on your day. Even though it's kind of hard to see this ladder right here on the blinding white. I think this might be the toughest one to find, just because it's hard to see. Why do the buzzards have bombs set up next to their car catapults? No idea, but I'm gonna take advantage of it. So yeah, I don't know if those bombs are on a timer of any sort. I don't think so. But even so, I mean, once you've taken out the uh, once you've taken out the guys around the bombs, and there's really no reason to stick around, so might as well sprint for it. Make it a little bit more make it a little bit more cinematic. I'm not gonna lie, I'm definitely not prepared to take on that much armor in a convoy. They would, uh, they would eat my lunch. At least one decent thing about convoys, they usually aren't too focused on killing you, as it were. The watcher pack said he's ruthless, same as cheat, but older and meaner. He camps it up all played out in the Great White. Water Pirates. They say he foretells the rising of the seas again. What can he offer? Heavy plates of steel armor, grills, and other life-saving defenses are his speciality. At a hefty cost, of course. Man, as I was saying, convoys are usually dedicated to keeping the convoy alive. Which is fair. Um most of the time when you pass by a convoy, if you do anger them, they'll just keep following the lead vehicle. Um, if they are in the middle of 
if you're in the middle of the fight, of course, they'll be, you know, harassing you the entire time. But they usually won't leave the convoy to track you down. So if your car does break down the middle of it, you can safely jump out and chum or repair it. So that's a plus. But it would take way too long for me to take out that armored convoy right now. But we'll be back for that. No worries about that. Just another shipwreck. Oh, don't be fooled. Where we see a wreck, his people see a bark. That'll save them for when the water returns. They protect what's theirs. Tooth and nail! to you. The one who died, Lord Scrotus. The one all that gas town aims to kill. The bringer of chaos and carnage. Sometimes I just hear some of their language they use, stuff like the one who died, Lord Scrotus, and it's similar to what they use in the movie, uh, Fury Road. Uh, at one point, one of the war boys talks about, uh, Imperator Furiosa traitoring uh, Immortan Joe. You traitored him, blah blah blah. So it's... I still think it's interesting to see how exactly uh, language has devolved in the world of Mad Max. Or possibly evolved. English is a living language, so... To have the language still changing even after the apocalypse is... It's, it's not bad, it's, it's normal. Totally normal. Everything I wish Lander would hold dear. <laughs> Late side. It's too strange. Oh! The wind and the gust. Went in the sacred house of the car, yet now they travel together as one. Oh, fluster, fluster. Any time to kill them. It's the little count of the carburetor. Oh, who could forget that whimpering? And the devious suckling face. Oh, dead a dozen times if you do, boy. We've come to deal. Uh, nothing else. I got gas. So pitch me, little man, before I make a blood sport of your driver here. He's no ordinary driver. This one oh, is sent to me by the angel could combustion herself. Angel, we parlay with the water gods here. We desire to, to make way to the dead bear. My sanctum. My sanctum is, is destroyed. It's burned. Everything I have is gone. Gone. I, I have nothing left. Please. This car needs healing, she does. And, and strengthening. Yes, and if, if you let us stay here, and, and rebuild, then, then I offer to you these. Uh, the hands of a Blackfinger. Yes. You'll have one chance for me. Oh, oh. <laughs> thanks. Thanks, B. Thanks, B. They say you are on your way to becoming a wasteland legend. Keep the deviant Blackfinger leashed. No need any of his perversions on my ship. Welcome to Gut Gas's ship. It's all right. I, I need welding wire to do my work. Make do for now. I'll find you welding wire. Gutgash's ship starts out in sort of the same sort of, well, mess that, uh, that Jeet's stronghold did. Which is okay. Honestly, it's, it's, it's the way it goes. They still need all these upgrades to make everything start to look good, and that's just the way things go. And of course, one of the first ones I'm going for will be the Scrap Crew. But Gutgash himself won't actually have a mission for us until we've taken down at least one camp within his, uh within his demence. So, 
it's honestly, it's even better of a time for me to start well, screwing around off camera. <laughs> So yeah, finally, we have everything we need to make the jack, including our first level of armor. So yeah, say hi to the jack. It's, uh, it's okay, I guess. It's definitely story mandatory. I mean, I'm still going to modify it almost instantly because I can do almost everything better with it. Consecrated corpus of the angel combustion. Your guise is now that of the Jack. <laughs> complete, radiant, deadly, and ready for anything. It won't be complete until we get the V8 from Gastown. Indeed, indeed, yeah. And maybe, maybe not even then. <laughs> I'm almost immediately going to modify this car to make it better. But that's going to be it for this episode, so until next time, stay thirsty.